All right, so we're going to continue our uh, chapter two chemistry uh, slides. So why do coastal areas have milder climates, less variable climates and in inland areas? Well, because of water's high heat capacity. So it takes a lot more energy to heat up the water because of that. So cities by the ocean are cooler, right? Um, and milder temperatures. Just check it out in the summer, okay? It could be 100 degrees here. What's the temperature at the beach? Hmm, think about that. All right, so another important property of water, low density as a solid. Density, think of density, something's dense. Dense, excuse me, mass over volume. That the think of like weight, but density. So when water becomes a solid, it's less dense. And so the solid floats, okay? So you're like, who cares, right? Well, think of the ocean. Uh, think of large bodies of water. When it gets really cold, the ice will float to the top. I can't get my pointer. The ice will float to the top and the liquid water will be on the bottom, which is good because the fish, all the living organisms, will not freeze to death, okay? So low density as a solid is an important property of water. Uh, water is a great solvent. So when you think about that, what does that mean? Solvent, things dissolve in water. Just think about like if you've ever, I hope you've never had this happen, but if you ever have a leak, right? and like the carpet will lift up or the wood will swell or reactions happen. So water is a good solvent, it dissolves stuff. That's really important for our bodies or really important for um, living organisms because what it means is it allows chemical reactions to take place. So you think about blood. Blood is mostly made out of water. Well, a lot of chemical reactions can occur um, in that. So those are the four main properties of water. Okay, so let me see. So here, cohesiveness, right? Reduced density as a solid, the ability to resist temperature change, broad effectiveness of, uh, as a solvent for ionic polar substances. So again, this would have been a three hour lecture and I'm probably doing it in 45 minutes. I would spend a lot more time talking about water. So H2O, two hydrogens and oxygen, they're covalently bound together to make this molecule water and all living things need water, okay? We have water inside the cells, we have water outside of the cells, chemical reactions occur, um, you know, really important molecule. All right, a uh, little thing they talk about in this chapter, pH. pH uh, talks about acidity or um, the, how basic or acidic a solution is. It means nothing to you right now. It won't mean anything until later. Um, but here's water, here's a water molecule, HOH or H2O. There's two hydrogen atoms with an oxygen. Well, the hydrogens and the oxygen and hydrogen, they can separate. And so we have hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. And the amount of hydrogen in a solution would determine acidity of a solution. The amount of hydroxyl ions would um, determine uh, how basic the solution is. So we have something called a pH scale, pH. It's a measurement of solutions. Are they acids or bases? Again, this means nothing to you, but it's actually important um, for plants, for our blood, etc. So here's the pH scale. It goes from 0 to 14. 7 is right smack in the middle. 7 is neutral, okay? So pure water has a pH of 7, and what that means is it's not an acid or a base. Um, as you go this way on the scale, right, they're acids. And the further you go this way, the stronger the acid. And as you go this way, 8, 9, 10 to 14, they're bases. And the, the, as you go that way, the stronger the base. And really strong acids and really strong bases are corrosive. 
What that means is they're highly reactive and they cause issues. If you look at human blood, can you find human blood? So is it an acid or a base? If you look, our blood is slightly basic. And we can, in our, in our blood, we can only tolerate little swings of pH, okay? So, and then problems happen, like enzymes will have issues and so on. Um, you can think of, think of water, water pH swings. Think of um, the acidity of the soil. So it, it affects aquatic organisms, it affects um, terrestrial organisms. So H plus, very reactive, acids can donate hydrogen. Stomach acids, our stomach acid has a pH of two. That's really strong. And you're like, okay, why doesn't it deteriorate our stomach? Because our stomach lining, there's mucus and the mucus um, neutralizes that. Bases are high with those hydroxyl ions. Antacids, baking soda, they would neutralize the acid. So blood pH, our blood pH needs to be consistent. And if it moves one way or moves the other, we have um, buffers to buffer that. All right, so now we just talked about water, we talked about pH. Now we're gonna talk about the four, yes, four types of macro molecules. What do you think macro means? Large, right? Large molecules. So these are the biggies. They're important because when we start talking about cells, uh, we'll be looking at them. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So the rest of this um, video is going to be talking about carbohydrates, lipids, and we'll probably need a third video to talk about proteins and nucleic acids. Okay, carbs, carbohydrates. Look at this, a bunch of Corn, you've heard of corn syrup. There's sugar in here, right? Tons of energy, okay? Carbohydrates are fuel for living machines, right? So ton, the sugar, our cells use the sugar for energy. Energy for what? To do work, okay? So carbs. So here, right, there are what are called complex carbohydrates or what are called simple carbohydrates. Um, you may have heard of glucose. Glucose is a common, simple sugar. Now, if we talk about, okay, here are these major sugars. Uh, what are they made of? Okay, so the black balls are carbon. Okay, carbon. And here's a covalent bond, another carbon covalent bond. Okay, the white balls are hydrogen. The red balls are oxygen, right? And it looks like this little ring and here's glucose. So simple sugars. When you, where is the energy? The energy is actually trapped in the bonds. And what cells can do is they can break these bonds and release the energy. And release the energy to do work, like growing, repairing, moving, whatever the cells are going to do. So Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, carbohydrates, C-H-O. Sometimes I had a professor in uh, college who would put C-H-O. Okay. Primary fuel for organisms. Primary means what? First. Okay. So our cells will use those first for energy. Um, can be used for cell structure too. Okay. So some common monosaccharides. It says... Energy is in the chemical bonds. Okay, mono means one. It's one sugar. So glucose, one sugar. Fructose, okay, that's the sugar found in fruit. Galactose, uh, lactose found in milk, okay? So these are some common sugars. All right, primary fuel, All right, monosaccharides. Okay, glucose provides energy for the body cells. For what? Cellular activity. Uh, it can be stored as a bigger sugar molecule. So glycogen is what's called a polysaccharide. Poly means many. So you put a bunch of little sugars together, you get a polysaccharide. Can be converted to fat, too much sugar. What does the body do? The body doesn't toss it away right? The body's going to store it as fat, okay? 
So here, this is a really neat slide. It shows what your body can do, what your cells can do with sugar. So sugar in the blood, if you've ever heard of blood glucose levels, yeah. So the body can use that for energy and shows a guy running, okay. Well, what if you're not using that energy? Well, the body's not going to get rid of it, right? It doesn't, it's not going to dump it. Um, you don't know when you're going to get your next meal, okay? So what the body will do or the cells will do is they'll store the sugar in large sugar molecules called glycogen or they can store it as fat, okay? Fat is, the we're talking about lipids, and they're for a long-term energy storage. That's why if you want to lose weight, let's say, what do you have to do? Okay, you have to work out. Okay, it's diet and exercise. They both go together. Diet for less calorie intake. Exercise to burn that energy, yes? And it takes a lot of exercise to start getting into your reserves to burn the fat. Okay, it takes like 20 minutes of exercise. So you're burning your simple sugars first, getting into your glycogen, the glycogen is stored in the liver, then getting into the vat. So aerobic, excuse me, aerobic activity, about 20 minutes before you start burning that the fat, right? Carb loading, um, athletes do this, where they, these this is full of complex carbohydrates, the big chains of sugars. And what they'll do is they'll load on that because uh, it takes longer to break that down, right? So it can sustain the athlete longer. So here, here's a simple sugar, glucose, and a bunch of chains of glucose, okay? And that makes glycogen, okay? So in animals, glycogen is a storage form of glucose, and it's a poly. Poly means many, a polysaccharide. Glucose, the most important carbohydrates to living organisms. Glucose in the bloodstream can be used as an energy source. I'm trying to find my little, okay. Can be stored as glycogen in the muscles of the liver. Muscles and liver can be converted to fat, yes. All right, uh, co complex carbohydrates are time-release packages of energy, okay. So one sugar is a monosaccharide. Can put two sugar molecules together. It's a dye. Dye means two, two sugars. So sucrose. Sucrose is the common sugar, um, like table sugar that you, you know, you add to your coffee. That's sucrose. So it's a disaccharide. Lactose, again, that's found in milk. Um, disaccharide. Polysaccharides. Poly means many. So that huge starch molecule, uh, excuse me. That huge glycogen molecule, right, is uh, a polysaccharide. And uh, here, starch, this is important, right? Starch is found in plants. It's a polysaccharide found in plants. So plants make sugar too. And plants are going to store them, and they store them as starch, okay? Plants also have cellulose. Cellulose is in the cell walls, and that's what makes plants' cell walls so strong. Okay. So here it shows, right, polysaccharides. We could break them down to get energy. So starch. 100 plus glucose molecules. So found in plant products, barley, wheat, rye, corn, rice. So when you think of, you know, how do you get your energy? Well, it's in, in, in the uh, starch, right? And we can break it down and get glucose and then our cells can use it for energy. Glycogen, animal starch. So simple sugars. Uh, will rise your blood sugar level pretty high and then go down versus complex sugars will take, don't rise as high, but will maintain your blood sugar levels for a little longer time. Of course, not all carbohydrates are digestible, meaning we can't break them all down. Chitin is found in animals, cellulose here in plants. We can't break those down. For us, cellulose in our, in our diet becomes fiber, okay? We can't break it down and absorb it, so we, we pass it along in our stool. But that doesn't mean it's not good. It is a good component of our diet, 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and then we'll have a third part of our lecture.